Warning, graphic pest control video ahead. Do not watch if you might be offended. If, however, you really like watching pest control videos, then hello again and welcome to the Squirrel Hunter channel. Please continue and watch us as we control pest populations with silenced air rifles here in the UK. If you have any questions, can you please check the description below first to see if it's already been answered and for some useful links. Thank you. As you might have already guessed, this is Squirrel Hill video part four. Grant will be opening up with the caliber gun cricket. And he's using Predator polymag shorts in 177. And on this day, Grant's shooting his feeder. Myself and Bro are shooting ours, and you'll see later on. That's the advantage of getting here early. See some of the more shy wildlife. There's deer's wandering around, there's quite a few on the hill. Not sure if they get hunted. But this one won't be, not with a caliber gun cricket. Nice to see though. As I said before, Grant's new to this film in Malarkey. You only get good at these things by practicing. I always enjoy a bit of nature watching. This one's got no idea Grant's there. I did wonder if he's going to come to the feeder and try and nick the wheat. It didn't seem to bother. Some wonky antlers on that one. I'm guessing that might be a candidate for a cull animal. I'm no expert myself. Just watch a bit on YouTube. Good bit of footage that Grant. Here comes his first victim, base of the tree. I've got an awful lot of video footage today, so what I'll do is speed up the approaches. Grant takes his time on this one, so I'll speed him up. There's absolutely no advantage in rushing a shot. They sit there for quite some time, especially when munching on wheat. There we go. Grant's lining up finally to take the shot. Good solid impact there. Drops it to the ground. This one's got up on the feeder. Before Grant's had a chance to turn his camera on. Sometimes happens. Probably surfing social media. Terrible I know, but good internet connection. And when you get bored, you end up chatting with the lads on the forums. When I shoot, I leave mine stuck on the sticks. The end wedged in the top of my chair. I think Grant leaves it on the floor because it's quite a small rifle. So he has to pick it up and take aim to take the shot. Here's another one that's got to the feeder before Grant's had a chance to put the camera on. There's quite a lot of ground vegetation here. A lot of the animals move across the ground, hidden by the ferns near the vegetation. There's the crow in the background. You can hear the movement from Grant. Seems like he was shuffling to pick the rifle up, so I was probably right. I'm going to get the sight picture and touch the bob of its head. Seems quite calm. Here we go. This time, there's a solid impact. Let's just check it on the ground. Not sure if he's needed any second shots on these ones because he hasn't filmed it. But none of them got away. Again, I've speeded it up. See quite a familiar pattern taking place. Take a bite, sit up and look for danger. Failed to spot the person in the hide and get shot in the head. Plenty of time. It's not like there's a queue of them waiting to jump on the feeder. So I kick on the ground. 
Might have to cut some of that vegetation down, I think. Another victim turned up on the feeder. This place is definitely full of them. And that's why we got called in to help out. As stated in previous videos, this area has not been shot for the greys. We run pheasants on here for a shoot. And invariably, pheasant feeders attract the squirrels in. Want any more information about why we're shooting the grey squirrels? Look in the description below. Plenty of links there for interest. I shan't be answering any questions on it. Not after I've supplied so much information. Anyway, here we go. Another one bites the dust. Right, it's just going to check it through his scope first. And go for the camera afterwards. Typical nervous kicks. Good solid shot to the head. Let's put this ring on it. I'll show you where it is. In case you haven't spotted it already. Speed him up onto the platform. Just wait for Grant to line up on it, take the shot. Didn't look too bad that. He hasn't killed it. And bottom right on the side of the tree. I don't believe that's the second square. I think that's the same one. Lining up on it. Definitely dead now. Pretty sure that's only one squirrel. Starting to come thick and fast now. A lot of these squirrels are coming in and not seeing any dead bodies on the ground. Because Grant's been popping out every so often, checking on them to make sure they're dead. And then fetching the carcasses back into the hide. So that's why you're not seeing dead ones on the round. I'm not entirely sure at what junctures he did this at. I'm pretty sure he did it a few times on this day out. If you're a bit suspicious about one on the floor, best to go out and check on it. And if you do, pick up the corpses. This one messes about quite a bit. Even scares a pheasant down the left hand side of the tree. Here it comes, hen pheasant. Off she goes. This one's a good much about in the back of the feeder. Eventually decides to come and sit on it. Not often they run away. And they certainly don't once they've been shot in the head. Not generally anyway. Good headshot. Generally stops them going far. That was a bizarre one earlier on. You see a squirrel on the right hand side of that feeder already. Grant's done what I normally do. As soon as you see one, turn the camera on. Then you spend your time prepping. Getting yourself sorted out with a rifle. Without videoing, we just shoot the thing. I'm afraid that's the way it goes. You've got to try and film it as well. He's lining up on it, ready to take the shot. Good solid impact there. Another one bites the dust. Yet another one that's managed to get to the feeder without being spotted. Bro used to do that. So nod off in his hide and open one eye. And if there's a squirrel on there, he just to pick the gun up and shoot it. Then go off for a nod off again. Sometimes it gets you like that. I'm not saying Grant was asleep. So he did the business on that one. That's a pile he'd been picking up. Took a little snapshot. Let's put it round up. There's nine squirrels there. That's the calibre cricket. And yes, that is the ATN Excite 2 on top. And no, there is no footage to go with it because we didn't have a card in, I do believe. A quick look at the surroundings. Lots of vegetation. And there's his hide. 
where he was looking back at the squirrels from. Just to give you an idea, about 15 yards ish, similar to what myself and Bro use. Nine squirrels out of the wood. Well done, Grant. Little trophy shot there for his records. Over to myself and Bro now. You can see the sun got quite a bit higher in the sky because we decided we're not going to get there too early. Bro's using his Air Arms S510 in 177. He's shooting the popular Barracuda Hunter Extremes. We do like these a lot. Since Bro had problems with his Day State Harrier X in 22, he swapped the Air Arms S510 and he's getting on really well with it. 177 pellets do a perfectly good job when placed correctly. Then again, you need to do correct placement with just about any round you use, unless you're using a rocket propelled grenade. As is quite often the case, you get these visitors pop in. It is a pheasant shoot after all. I think it's looking for some spilt grains. Messy eating squirrels have dropped. It's obviously nose to come and have a look around this area. That is a feeder after all. Pretty birds. It's very stupid. Here's the first victim for Bro. That looks like the fattest squirrel in the world to me. Get a lot of glare off the sun there on the camera. You can still see it okay. I'm not sure what's happened there. It's almost like he had no pellet in the gun. Very strange one that. Quick recock. Pellet up the spout. And swiftly into the side of the squirrel's head. No, it's not trying to run away. Back legs are kicking, front end all floppy. Perfectly good job that. Unfortunately for Bro, because I've moved my feeder closer, I do think I'm stealing his squirrels. He only gets one this day. Another blank, luckily enough. Big fat squirrel on the deck. Not brilliant. It's unfortunate, really. Over to me now. I'm using my Theoban Rapid 12 in 22 caliber. I'm launching Polymag Shorts. Seems to be my feeder weapon of choice at the moment. I usually check it just before I start out. See if there's a dip in the corner, which there is. It's hard to tell from there if I know they've been on it. There's a stone just there on the corner of that breeze block. I'm going to take a shot at, check my zero. Nothing wrong with that, always pays to check your zero. Just to be on the safe side, breeds a lot of confidence, and it's the right thing to do. 99.9% .9 of the time, there's no issue. But it's better to find out on a stone, than on a live animal. I'm talking to live animals, I spotted a squirrel approaching. There he is, on the ground, hopping in. Beeline straight for it. Quick sniff about. I won't bother to speed this one up. It doesn't mess around for too long. My adjustment to the feed has gone well. That extra ledge I screwed on last time, which was the one that broke off the side when I dropped it. Seems to work quite well. 45 degrees roughly, in relation to the feeder. It sits quartering lovely on that. I'll wait for it to sit up. I'm happy with the side picture. Here we go. And it went still. It did death with the pellet. See the blood come out of the ears already. That was a good sign. Another advantage of a bank, 
when they do their little kicks, they tend to tumble away from the feeder, thus clearing it, taking away any anxiety for future squirrels. They do like a good slope. And also I can see them quite easily. Just a few spasms off this one. That'll do nicely for squirrel number one on the ground. A lot of them come from the right, like right two o'clock direction, down the bank. You can probably smell the other squirrel who's come before. Tail's flicking away. That squirrel's kicked across that way. We're back on speeding up the squirrel. Just for another good old mess about. I did think it was going to disappear from view at that one point. Eventually comes back around. Gets on the feeder. And needless to say, I'm ready for him. Good solid impact off the polymag. I do rate them very highly, as I've said in previous videos. Proper skull busters when applied to the right spot. You can see the brain oozing out the front of the head. There's no way that's alive. Check Ted's video below if you don't understand why they kick after a headshot. I'm more than happy with that. Dropped in clean. Or her, I'm not sure. Squirrel two in the bag. I'm a happy bunny. More movement, this time I'm directly in front coming down the bank. I tell you for nothing. After a You'll see some more videos. It's a common route straight down from maybe two o'clock position here. So obviously bed down at the top of the hill. They're coming down towards the pheasant pens which are down the bank behind me. About 30, 40 yards. Of course this is a perfect place to intercept them on that approach. They've obviously found this food source. Nice and convenient. Once one's been on it. The others will smell them or they'll see them from a tree. What's Dave doing? Looks like he's found some food. I'll go and help myself to some once he's gone. Or I'll go and duff Dave off and eat some myself. That was having a good sniff about. It's a bit concerned. Again, I've had to speed this up. I've tested my patience quite a bit this one. It's obviously a smell better when I went down the bank. Didn't bother too much though, did it? Maybe be down for the feeder. I didn't waste any time. I had the opportunity to pop a toes up time this time. Bit of an odd one, isn't it? Always suspicious of not kicking. It's quite difficult to see while I'm sat. I'm looking at that camera, it's quite difficult as well. I lean forward and to the left, you can see a tiny screen, and I've decided it needs a second shot. Just like that. Aim that pellet to go into the brain behind, so I know the pellet's going to go straight through the skull pretty much. So I pick a point on the side nearest to me where I think the pellet's going to go in, but it will then carry on through the brain. That'll do. Knocked it pretty much unconscious for the first one. The second one did the business. Got the camera on, because I've seen one come from behind me, across the road, well it's a dirt track really, with the gravel on. There is pheasant pens behind, like I said before. I'm not actually rearing pheasants at this moment in time. 
that's why we're here. That's why our feeders become very good squirrel magnets. I debated whether to let this piece stay in. This one actually runs off in the end. I'll tell you that beforehand. I just sped it up to show how much hassle I went through waiting. Seems overly nervous about pheasant. It went on so long I had to cut a great big chunk out of that video. It's the same squirrel, still messing me about. I resorted to trying to get it to sit up and take notice. There's nothing of the sort. Can't shoot it like that. Not less of a shotgun. I decided to include it just to show it's not all easy. It's wandered off now. See, is it? But it's none the wiser of my presence. I'm sure it'll get caught eventually. With them's the rubs, I'm afraid. Mr. Pheasant back. Let's see if the clumsy squirrels drop some grain. No joy there. Hello. Look, he just bounded in behind as I was filming that pheasant. This will be a bit better. No messing this time. It's one right in front of its face on the floor and it doesn't care. I was lining it up on this point. I expected that pheasant to maybe spook it a bit. I was a bit dubious about taking the shot. Then it goes under there. This is more like it. That'll do. Pheasant doesn't care either. What's going on there with that squirrel? More perturbed by the way it's kicking rather than the fact it just got shot in the head. Good side on headshot, kick the dead one in the face, and then kick his heart in the back. Very often do zoom in on them. Looking at a rib cage. See if it's moving. It's not the rib cage moving. The lower muscles spasming. Quite happy with that shot. That'll do. Spotted some movement to the left. Do be the squirrels over the bank from behind me on the other side this time. Try to pick it up. Can't quite make it out. Definitely something there though. It's with the camera back front of me. Hopefully that'll be where they're headed or it's headed. See more movement. There it is. Go on son, in you go. Settle the camera there. Another messer, so I sped him up. Can be quite frustrated, I know. It does eventually get on the feeder. Now it's on the feeder, I'll line up, take the shot. Nice and steady, and I completely miss. I think I might have got caught by a head movement there. Looking at it now, I think that's what happened. Looking to the right, and then his head went to the left. It's only a small target. Very often you get a second chance of those type of things. Clean miss, and they run up the tree. What was that? And very often you get a second bite of the cherry, so to speak. Not on this occasion. Caught by a head movement. There we go. Maybe that's the same one, possibly. 
pretty sure it was only a minute or two after that other one ran off. So maybe it's gone and come back again. Can't never tell. I'm guessing it might be because this one runs off. Might be the smartest squirrel you've ever seen in your life. I don't like seeing smart squirrels. I like shooting the smart ones and letting the dull ones breed. I'm quite sure what it's doing there. Maybe it's doing a bit of foraging. Got no shot on anyway. Too far to my left. Too difficult to get a position from where my rifle is on the sticks. Maybe a Texas heart shot as well looking at it. If I did have a shot. That one's another one that's wandered off and scathed. Got quite a big lull now in the activity, so I'm just sit down. Enjoy the sunshine. Listen to the birds. Just wait for another victim to turn up. Here's a likely candidate. That one's come from behind me. Check out the dead body first. I will say that after that miss, I did take some test shots and found them all to be okay. This one's turned up. I waste no time in taking the shot. No head movement this time. Good solid impact. So lots of damaged polymags. The necropsis before in previous videos. Tend to shatter the skull. The skulls of these things are pretty much like paper, very, very thin and light. You perhaps have no trouble in penetrating them. You've got to make sure you go through the skull and into the brain. Under the brain, no good. Too far forward, no good as well. Well, that'll do. Cheered me up no end. There's another runner. This is the camera on it, so I just have a bolt off. Now that may or may not be the other one, I don't know. Not sure about the idea of a hyper nervous squirrel running around the place. That one never came back. I cut a chunk of video eight. Let the camera point in that direction as this pheasant comes back in. Hello. This is more like it, filming the pheasant and another squirrel runs in. That's it son, get on there. I'm lifting the rifle. It's almost in the upright position. Acquire the target. Let the crosshair set up. Judge its behaviour. Looks pretty calm, doesn't it? That'll do. I miss it completely. I'll tell you what's happened now. I've slipped on my sticks. Rather annoyingly. So I've been out and picked up the dead bodies. I had a look around, I managed to source a piece of wire from out of my car. I tied my bottle to my sticks. Stop that happening again. Quite annoyed with that. Two misses in one session. They were clean misses. That one should never have happened now. It's one thing getting caught out by head movement. Having your bottle slip. 
Again, she sticks. Not good at all. A bit more of a weight. Another squirrel comes down the bank. Looks like it's coming straight in. And again, after the last miss, did a bit of testing to make sure that my little wiring job did the business. You leave the sticks wedged into the ground, they got metal spikes on them so they don't slip that way. Another bottle's tied to it, it's like having a massive bipod on it. Bit of an ad hoc solution. Luckily my car's filthy dirty. Got lots of junk in it. I was able to find something to do the job. Now we're back in business. Comes another squirrel, sat on the feeder. This'll do. Business as usual. Does help if you pick them up. Violent reaction. Quite happy the shot was a good one. Confidence is restored. Never had the bot slip on them sticks before. Not quite sure why it did that, whether it's positioning. We have pretty much taken on board the wiring method from there on. Pops up in future vids, or should do. You can hear them squacking around you. You know, there's more opportunities to be had. Just got to be patient. There we go. Patience is yet again rewarded. When they sit still like that, it's very tempting. But you know, they're going for the feeder pretty much. Do like a good poly mag impact. Barrel roll down the hill. So I prefer to have a lot of foliage flattened down in front of me. What I usually do is do a bit of weeding if necessary. Not so bad with a sloping towards you slope. It's quite easy to see things. Belly up. Dead as a doornail. This one's caught me out. Sometimes when they come down that hill, if they come straight down, the tree obscures their approach. I might have been chatting with the lads on Facebook, sending texts and what have you. I used to do that in my early days of shooting. Here we go, another messer. Finally takes up a residence on that little stick at the back. I was tracking it. I caught it just under the ear with a poly mag. What you need to do is to get them to sit still. And that presented itself quite nicely. stuff there. I'm 99.9% .9 sure the shot was good in the initial reaction. I'd be more worried if it didn't kick. Another one down. 
Excellent. That's the missus. Good to get back on track. There he is. Again, from the two o'clock direction. Starting to form a bit of a pattern now. Eh? Not least with the mess in the boat as well. This will be my last squirrel of the day. Just let you know. Got a lot of faff in the boat. In fact, he messes so much about. I try to attract his attention with a squirrel call. I do do a very good job of it. Sounds more like a chimpanzee to me than a squirrel. I'm trying to do it one-handed. Well, I'll start track it with the other one. It sits still in a second. It's just there. I'll catch it when just under the ear. No wrong with that. Blood gushing at the ear. Those caught in the way shots are quite good as well. You've got a good shot at the head. Especially with the head stuck out like it was. I'll take that. Quite a lot of bird life in this wood. It's good to hear. Was already packed up. Let's put the finishing touches to the video. Check out the last squirrels I shot. Had one pick up, remainder in the hide. Quite happy with those shots. I was denied by two misses, else I could have made another double figure bag, but I'll take the nine for today. The sun's out, I'm off home. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.